guys, it's Monica here. I am so excited to introduce you to Real Estate Fight Club's newest partnership, Cyberbacker. Cyberbacker is the best in the business for virtual assistants. How do I know this? Because I am a Cyberbacker customer and I love this company. I have my favorite, Frances. She is my Cyberbacker, been with me for over a year. She's amazing. She makes me better. She's eager to help. She's on time. She's disciplined. She's awesome. And this company, Cyberbacker, has figured out the system from the interviewing process to find out what I need to the interviewing process to interview several Cyberbackers to the onboarding process to the training process. Very buttoned up, very awesome. You and I both know it's time for you to leverage. It's time for you to take that step and Cyberbacker is a really safe, awesome solution. Make sure to mention Fight Club and you will be getting a free gift. All right, do it. Make the call. See ya. All right, welcome to the show. Today we are having some team talk. This is kind of like part two of uh, what we did last time when we talked about teams. So welcome again, TJ Gossman and Aaron Hendon. How are you guys doing? Oh, just excellent. Thursday, close to the best day of the week. Almost. Thirsty Thursday. It's a good day. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's finish our, let's talk about teams. So last time we talked about what do you pay team members and kind of the makeup of the team. Now we want to grow it. So we, what do you think about, give us some context, Aaron, for like when you're thinking about growing the team with new agents versus like capping agents or more experienced agents? Well, I, I think it's sort of a no brainer. I mean, I think this is, I, I know we're, we're supposed to fight about something here, but I don't think they're really. I'll fight I mean, you no matter what. It'll okay, fine. fine. Well, I, okay. Just to say the word team and you're like, okay, let's go. Exactly. Um, <laughs> but you know, if you could get nothing but capping agents, if you didn't have to, you know, spend the time and invest the sweat it takes to bring someone from zero deals to really their first hundred, because that you know maybe they get to capping two years, you know, a year in, two years in. If you could just bring on capping agents, of I think it's a no-brainer. I think of course you would just bring on capping agents. It's if it would be it's life would just be so much easier to but, not have to do that. But you can't, I mean, you know, the, to actually get, you know, the, the question is really is why a ca the fight is, is it worth it for a capping agent to be on a team? Right. I mean, and I think I would fight that it a hundred percent is. Yeah, you are. That's you. I exactly. Uh, right. I, I don't know. I mean, TJ, what do you do? You, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think the value proposition is much more difficult to recruit a capping agent. I think you need to have a lot more, um, a, a lot more bait, essentially, where you can mm -hmm. say, look, man, you're a $4 million agent. We can make you a $10 million agent. Right. Th that's essentially got to be But I your think story. that's what you're yeah. growing a team for, right? Because if you just only, it's... I hear what you guys are saying. What you're telling me is it's easier and it's low hanging fruit to recruit newer agents to your team. Yeah. I would argue it's a terrible return on investment for your but time. Depends, depends on the agent. I mean, here's my thought. You give me It does not depend on the agent. I disagree. You give me someone with work ethic, okay? And I can build loyalty. I can keep them for five, six, 10 years versus you bring in a capping agent, keeping them, even if you double their business is difficult because they immediately think, well, I can do this myself. That's what I did. I literally did that. Right. I, for, after two years, I thought I can do this myself. I went and I did it myself. So I, I, to me, it's like, if I show you what to do and I build into you and I build into you and all you know is that when I'm with TJ, I'm successful. That's going to be much more difficult to say I can go on my own. They've never done it. They've never felt it. That That's my only argument. So it's like, yeah, is it tough at the beginning? Absolutely. Might I get 10 years instead of 18 months? Yes. So that's the- On maybe the one of how many agents that you built into. 
Yeah, I mean, but that's going to be the case with everybody, right? If you bring on five, you're probably going to keep two. I don't know. Aaron and I are talking later on his podcast. We're fighting it out over, I think, teams in this way are kind of dumb. Aaron. Aaron, Aaron yeah, I mean, I, I, I new agents. What's that? Do you guys take on new agents? Yeah, we almost ex- we 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 look for we look for cappers, and mostly we what we wind up with is new agents because new agents are it is a it is indisputable from the agent's perspective that being on a team makes sense when you're right out of school. Hundred percent I mean, agree. But you're uh, a capping agent and you're on a team, so what's right. the value? Well, when I run and it's not even your team, that's the thing, right? right? So how do we recruit you? Right. Well, you got to get, you know, you, the split's got to be right. The the math needs to work. And it's funny because every year I sit down and I do the math and I look to see how much money did I make and how much did I give to the team and how much would I, what would it have cost me to do it on my own? And what did I get from the team to, you know, in outsourcing for me, it's a Pareto's principle math equation. Okay. Eight, if I can outsource the 80% of garbage work mm-hmm. so that I can spend a hundred percent of time doing the 20% of the work that makes a difference. Yeah. I can outsource all that. And it doesn't cost me more than it would cost me to do it on my own. Then it makes sense to be on a team. Well, I think the team also like brings a certain there's a lot of other stuff, right? There's the culture, the camaraderie, the accountability, totally. the, all this and stuff. I, but then even I, I would argue, which we will be doing later on your show, is that at EXP, we've, all, we've created that where you can have like a quote unquote, the culture, the team, the feeling, the vibe without having the liability of a team and especially the liability of like new agents. They're a huge liability. I mean, you're, the, you're even a broker, Right. right. Yes, so I am a managing broker. I don't know, TJ. What's prompting you to like build a team? What do you What are you looking for? What do you think? Like, why do people go to that? Is it only because that's what they know? Or so? Well, for me, there was a couple of things. So I, I was, um, I did, I ran the training at my last team, like, and I really liked that part of the business, which not right. everybody does. So that was something that, like, I didn't want to give up. Um, right. I also thought that having a team member that can focus on buyers would really allow me to focus on what I want to focus on, Mm -hmm. um, which is listings, listings, right. right? And leading, you like leading and training. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I enjoy that. And, you know, for, for me, it works now what a team looks like to me and what a team looks like to others, right. Uh, is different. I'm comfortable with a small tight group. I don't need 15 members. That doesn't appeal to me. Um, you know, so there's so many different looks of a team. My goal is, is anybody that would join our team. I hope that they do more business. I hope that they become much better agents. Mm -hmm. Um, and I hope that they have the skills that if they ever want to go out on their own, they're capable of doing it. My goal is to have a value proposition where it doesn't make sense for them. Right. And that's the constant. And that's where the financial piece comes in that, that Aaron's talking about the camaraderie. What do you guys yeah. think about having like, cause I agree with you, Aaron, like the people that are brand new all day long, it makes sense. But what would it look like? Like if that, once you got your license, it was like already in place that there was some type of like training or apprentice or some type of environment that trained them so it wasn't taking you and your other team members away from doing business, but they were still getting trained. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I think that's a big deal. I mean, I think industry wide, you're talking like for uh, you're talking about the in the industry. Yeah, yeah, I think it's uh, I I could fight anyone about this too. It's we get what we deserve. We're we're on you know there's evidence, or if you want to argue that we're being disintermediated by Open Door and the orchids and the, uh, you know, the way discount brokers and the whole world of it. And frankly, we deserve it because yeah. we do such a shit job of training our people that there's no apprentice, journeyman, masters right. program. There's no distinction. That, there's no distinction in the body. Any, anybody with $2,000. Wait a minute, but doesn't my CRS uh, badge or whatever? Yes. Oh, did I buy some more letters? By sitting, by clicking on next, next, I'm a next. listing specialist, Aaron. A listing specialist. I took a class. 
I'm a senior specialist because now I know that the greatest generation is, I mean, it's just absurd. It's absurd. We are an absurd industry and it's the easiest profession. I mean, you know, this is, I, I wrote about this in my book because it's, it's disgusting. It takes a, a thousand hours to learn how to cut hair. A thousand hours. Yeah. yeah. A thousand hours to learn how to cut hair. And they charge 20 bucks. No, my hours. hair is way more than 20. I understand, but look at me. Okay. <laughs> but still way more. So is it $200? Is it $300? A mm-hmm. thousand hours and three hundred dollars to sell a million dollar house. You study for ninety hours, right? Ninety, yeah, ninety, yeah. In every state, every state, le- less than a hundred. Every state, yeah, less it's than a hundred. Crazy, and it's what are we thinking? We deserve what we get, and so yes, yeah. as an industry, it would make a huge difference to actually have distinctions and not bullshit like how many rods are in the maker testing. Right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Well, TJ, I know that you've how to read a quadrant map. I know, right? Exactly. <laughs> you've you've been a team member. You've you've had you have a team now on your own, and there's been like some pros and cons. What do you think about as people are thinking about building a team? We talk, you know, we talked about new agents versus agents that are existing. But what are the other things that they're not thinking about that you only know when you fail? Yeah. I mean, I think the biggest one, in my opinion, is everybody worries about leads, leads and split. Those are the two things that everybody worries about. And to me, the key is how do I lead generate is what they should be asking. How are you going to teach me how to lead generate and hold me accountable? Mm -hmm, Because mm -hmm. frankly, like, I mean, if you're counting, if you just want leads, just go pay a service online to give you shit leads. We can get you those all day. Right. Um, but like, I, I feel like the miss is like the tool, give me the tools to where I can do this and build my business. And, and that's really what people should be looking for. And I've never had, but isn't that more of a coach? Why do you need to be on a team for that? Well, I think the weakness with coaching, and this is just my experience and I have a coach, I am a pro coaching guy is the daily accountability. I I think that like, I've never had a coach to give me daily accountability. Now they'll have you fill things out, but like you talk to them maybe once every couple of weeks. I mean, to have somebody do it with you, sit next to you. Hey, this is what we're going to do. We're not going to be scared. We're going to pick up the phone. We're going to have fun doing it. Like there's value there that can make you a million dollars over the next five years. If, if you're, you know, if you have work ethic, that's the one thing you can't train. That's I've come to believe you either have it or you don't. I agree. I think though, one of the things that people miss as they're growing their team. And it's something that I thought too, that when you grow your team, there's really only the revenue line. Like, oh, they're just like going to like bring in more money. (laughs) Wrong. (laughs) I mean, it's, there's a lot of expenses that go with having a team member, especially there's more with a newer team member. So I think, and there's opportunity costs. Aaron, what are you seeing as some of the things people need to think about that they don't necessarily know? Yeah. Well, the, the, the thing that's um, universal, and I interview a lot of team leaders, that's what my show is for, is interviewing team leaders about what's working. And universally, the team leaders of broker owners that are winning, and there are, Jennifer, people that are winning. Yeah, right, at that. we'll and see. They do, I'll talk to they, them. Okay, fine. But, they, <laughs> but here's what they love. They love developing people. Yeah. They, I interviewed someone last yesterday. And she went from three agents to 43 agents. She's now the largest independent black owned brokerage in in Philadelphia. Wow. Good for her. From three to 43. And they have Monday morning. She's a minister and she has a Monday morning prayer session for for everybody if they Mm -hmm. want to come. And they do one-on-ones and they do, they, they, she's clear and the, Team leaders and broker owners that are winning are clear. Their job is not to train people to sell houses, develop people Mm -hmm. and be great business owners. That's what TJ's alluding to. Yes. And if you do that, you will get, you will then get cappers and they will be, and then it becomes, so first of all, then they'll be bonded to you. Like TJ is saying, they'll, they'll love you. And it's not, they're going to stay for loyalty. 
they're going to stay because you got to keep changing those splits. And they all, those splits, when they get to that level of performance, are, no one's giving less than 80 20. Right. Nobody keeps a capping agent at more, at taking more than 20%. Right. right. So, you know, when I look at the 20% that I give my team, I'm like, I can't stage and clean and deal with the vendors and deal with my cards. And I don't have to up, I don't have to front that money for the staging. Mm -hmm. I don't have to, I I don't have to worry about it. I, I pass my list. I pass my listing documentation to my trans. I tried to do my own transaction coordination on a, why? Because I had a 1% deal on a land deal. I was just managing both sides. Oh my God. (laughs) So bad. What they were like, I need your commission form. I was like, doesn't that just come automatically? I have no idea. Got to learn how to use Sky Slope. No, no, right. So that I don't have to do any of that. That's worth twenty percent of my commission any day of the week. And once you're a capping agent, nobody, there is no team that I talk to that gives their capping agents less than eighty percent. And I do say it's seventy percent on listings, eighty percent on buyers. And, and some do something like if I give you the lead, it's 50, 50 or right, whatever, or whatever, but, but their job isn't to do anything, but grow those people. Those are the winning teams without a doubt. That's all they do. They consider themselves educators, trainers, developers, and they do that full time. If you don't yeah. love that, you can't be a team leader. You can't That's- be a successful team leader. No, I like that. And I think that that could be a mistake. And that that's probably the mistake that I made is being the rainmaker and being good at sales and then trying to transfer into a team leader. And it's a totally different skill set. Yes. Completely different. And you get pulled out of production, which makes me crazy. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Uh. Any final thoughts to wrap this up, TJ? Yeah, I think um, I think we we made some really really good points, and I, I I love what you said, Jen. Just because you're a great salesperson doesn't mean you're a great team leader, and that's okay. It's okay. That's okay, right? Like, know your strength, lean into it, and if you try it and you don't like it, it's okay. Like some people just aren't cut out for it, and that's not like an indictment on character. It's just a personality yeah. different. Yeah, exactly. It's, not what you're, it's not you know. Yes, that's right. Exactly. Well, TJ, you do business in um, Cincinnati and Dayton. If people yes. want to get a hold of you or they're interested in maybe talking to you about being on the team, what is the best way to get a hold of you? Just shoot me a call or a text 513 379 2000. Does it spell anything? No, I'm not smart enough for that, but 2000 is pretty great. 2000 is pretty great. It is. Yeah. And Aaron, you're in Seattle. I am. We work the whole Puget Sound area and they can get me at um, uh, Christine and company. Uh, oh God, what is it? It's Christine dash. Forget it. Aaron Hinden dot work. Just come to me at Aaron Hinden dot work. That'll get to me, you to my page and you can hear all about me. And, what and how do they find your podcast? Uh, it is the agency for agents podcast. And that's on all the podcast places you can find agency for agents. And I don't think I knew you had a book. TJ, did you know this? I did not. I did catch that in my uh, book. Yeah. Yeah, was good. We need a signed copy, Aaron. Yes. Sell your home like a boss. Secrets Let's of a five star managing broker. Let's go, baby. <laughs> love it. Love it. I love yeah. it. There's a whole like 10 page rant on the bullshit agent. It's phenomenal. I'm going to hire my friend, you know, like the 90 hour thing. That's a, just, it's really what got me started on writing books was because I got into the industry and I was like, are you shitting me? Right. Are That's, you shitting me? This is how this works. This idiot on the other side of the table is getting the same money I'm getting. It's crazy. Crazy. It's crazy. Well, yeah. you know, since we're in a shifting market, we might as well change the world while we're at it. So yeah. let's do right. this. Go team. <laughs> All, right. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Thanks, guys. Bye. Have a good day. See ya. Hi, guys. Monica Weekly here. You know how you're supposed to post about real estate every single day on Facebook? Yes. Yes, you do. And the reason is if we don't remind our Facebook friends what we do for a living and how we help people, they will forget about it. 
We know it's our job to inform, educate, and demonstrate what we do for a living. Well, I'm coaching agents all around the country, and they understand that, but they're not doing it. And I ask them, why aren't you doing it? Probably just like you. And they said, Monica, we don't know what to post. Can we just borrow your stuff? Because I love creating Facebook posts. And these can often be used over on Instagram as well. So I said yes, and people were borrowing my stuff. So I created finally a product that you can sign up for for free. It is free, guys. There is no reason for you not to sign up for this. It's ghostposter.com, G H O S T. P-O-S-T-R, no E in there, just T-R.com. And what you're going to get is you're going to get a Facebook posting idea to your email every single day. So not only do you have this great idea, but you've been reminded, oh yeah, I need to post. And that's Monday through Friday. And if you don't love the post or you think, gosh, I'd like something else, well, you're also going to get access to a library of over 600 different posts for you to choose from by category. You're going to love it. Go sign up, ghostposter.com. Don't waste a minute. And then be sure to join the private Facebook group. All right, I'll see you in there. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a podcast.